game plan is to get to the old famous glassing spot. See if we nice can, slow drudge to the glass spot. See if we can find that uh, big old book. He was heading up the mountain so fast today. He'd already spotted three deer by the time I got my sorry butt up here. Just found a buck way over on the other side of the basin. Um, a little better than the two four points we saw this morning. So good looking deer. Haven't got a great look at him yet. Looks like a young body deer, but he keeps looking around pretty vigorously like he's got some companions. So we're going to study him up and see what we can define him. Oh, is there a bigger one than Lorenzo's around here? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Bo didn't even have to think about that one. Is there a crazier looking one than the one you shot? There is a crazier one. Oh, yeah. There's an odd tip of here somewhere. Really? Yeah. Well, that'd be cool. Today, we have a little bit of a situation where we're swapping cable guys, so while Jonathan leaves, and Marcus gets in tonight, I'm in charge of filming. So don't expect a lot of filler, a lot of story, a lot of anything today, okay? I'm looking for Elvis. That'd be a good name for that buck that we've been calling number one. Big, wide, slick back. Bet you when he strolls through a group of does, everyone pays attention. The king. I think you, Lorenzo shot the king, so maybe we can't name him. No. I really want to find buck number one. I don't know why we can't find him. It's kind of, kind of making me mad. I don't like when I can't find deer. Oh, God. Those are the three little ones that were with buck number one. Mm. And buck number two, I'm pretty sure of it. Well, here's the plan for the rest of the day, folks. Jonathan Spear, camera guy number one, has to hike out of this basin up over that ridge to get back to the trailhead. Even downhill, he's got about five hours. But we're gonna sit here in case, as he walks that higher trail, he bumps some deer. And then I don't know what we're gonna do after that, guys. What's the plan after that? Sleep. Go back to camp for a nap? Shoot one. Shoot one, okay. But what if we don't shoot one, then what? Nap time? Go shoot a different one. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good plan. You can shoot one. So, the quality of the footage is about to have a serious gap until Marcus gets here, because it's all in my hands. We're kind of hoping you'll leave, Jonathan. The sooner you leave, the quicker the big one will show up because we don't have professional talent to film it. But Lorenzo has demonstrated, based on his kill shot, that he got a bow's buck on his uh, eye, uh, phone scope. He's, uh, he, he's good camera number two, for sure. And then when we use the, the GoPros to say, what does Randy usually say now? I'll be here to say what Randy usually says. So. We're, we, we got it, don't worry. All right, that's it for me. Marcus is gonna take over when he gets back in tonight and I'm heading out. Be safe. I will. Be careful. I will. All right, thanks for all your hard work. You're welcome, Lorenzo. Been nice to meet you. Been a pleasure. Yeah, it's Good. been really nice to get to know you. Fun. Nice to know you too. Bo, nice to finally meet you. Look nice. forward to hunting you, Randy. We'll allow me on the show. Absolutely. One for the road. I'll take a spicy jalapeno meat stick for the road. Bye, llamas. I'm a little bummed to be leaving now. Randy hasn't gotten a deer yet, and he's just going to start elk hunting in a couple days. So. A little bummed about that, but it'll be cool for Marcus to take over and film the rest of the hunt. 
and I promised my girlfriend I'd be back for her birthday, so got to hike out and I'm excited for that. So it's been a fun seven days, but time to get back to civilization and let Marcus take over when I meet him on the trail. Okay, so I am right above the area we've been referencing as the rainbow. Looks kind of like a rainbow. Except for it's just all green, gray, and brown. But I'm right above the area where we've been seeing a lot of good deer. So Randy told me to make some noise. Hopefully scare him down that way. towards them, but I'm breathing so heavy and picking up so many rocks that I guarantee you they're hearing me without me having to try hard to be loud. Nice. All right, I'm about to lose sight of them. There's the guys in the llamas still glassing. Hopefully I kick some deer their way. Tell you what, man, I'm really missing those llamas right now. Llamas are so great. But, if they can carry a bunch of weight all the time, I can carry a medium amount of weight sometimes. It's a rare Marcus Hockett. Marcus, how's it going? It's going good. Good to see you. Ready to roll? I'm, I'm ready to roll out of here. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, it's all uphill from here. All right. But uh, yeah, you'll you'll handle it. How was how was Alaska? That was awesome. Okay. That was a blast. You had, you had a full 24 hours to get ready for this. Yeah. Right around that. <laughs> awesome. Glad to hear it. Let's get <laughs> some laundry. That's about it. Perfect. Well, it's been a blast up there. I hope you have a ton of fun. I'm uh. A little sad I have to leave, but I'm pumped for you to get to go film the rest. Sweet. All right, well. Good luck. Thanks, that's it for me. Not safe. All right, see you, Marcus. All right. I got a new GoPro now. So there you, you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Have a good one. yeah. That was wild. <laughs> uh, just hiking up the trail a little bit after trading off with Jonathan. And uh, just had a cow and a calf moose at 10 yards, and then that bull came in to less than four yards. It's <laughs> uh, first time I uh, disarmed my, or uh, took the safety off from a bear spray in a while. Like, eh, I don't think he's gonna charge, but you never know. Holy crap. Oh, right there, too. Oh, right behind me. I better keep, keep an eye out. I'm gonna fall off this place. Dang. Weird. The other one's only 100 yards back. The rut is on. I could tell you that this was working out real well. We're sitting up on this really windy ridge in the sun, waiting for the deer to come out for their evening. And that's about all I have to show for today.
not very good. But these guys, Lorenzo and Bo promised me that at 5.30, the buck is gonna be out on this hillside out here behind the camera. But the way the wind's blowing, I don't know that I could kill him. More later. We all split up. And Bo is up here waving for me to get over here. So I had to leave with the llamas and just tied them off over the hill. We just seen a big buck coming this way. Another hunter standing there talking to us. So no shot right now. Is, is he still bedded? He's looking the opposite way.
Randy's got just a corner of vitals, and I think that about being about 300, 350, that he can make that shot, bed it down. Pretty comfortable. We'll see what happens here, folks. This is exciting. Come on, Randy. The wind's are blowing, boys and girls. If I make this shot, it's going to be a miracle. I heard it hit him. He's dead. I heard it hit him. He's dead. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Randy, yes. That was the hardest shot I have ever made. <laughs> Holy 280 <laughs> yards with the crosswind. I held about 14 inches upwind. I had a window that wide that didn't have brush. And he's down. What a shot, Randy. I, I can't believe it, Lorenzo. <laughs> I can't. I'm shaking so bad. So he's bedded uphill with his head and his neck with a sage bush right there. And there's an opening right here that's from about there to there. And you made it. And he's piled up in the bushes right down there. I don't know how good of a cameraman I make, but we'll see. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> nice job, Randy. I can't believe it. I did not believe it, folks. What do you think of that buck? I, to be honest, all I can see is a big, massive frame. I, I can't. Thank you so much, Lorenzo. <laughs> I don't know how good of a cameraman I make, but we're going to find out. Made it to camp. Stopped in glass for a little bit, saw a few deer, and uh, here's a boy. Not super, not as excited to see me as I am to see them. What's up, boys? Hey, boys! I just got a message though that Randy shot a giant. So I'm gonna go try to find them. I have no idea where they are, but it sounds like they're gonna be getting back to camp super late. Of course, it happens when there's no camera guy here because it. Why would it, why would it happen when there was a camera guy here? That would just be silly. <laughs> oh well, that's cool. Hopefully they got some phone scope of it or something. Took out a bunch of velvet. Thank you, Buck. Thank you, thank you. That is a beautiful buck. Wow. Couldn't do it without Lorenzo and Bo helping. I would have, I would have, I mean, Bo saw this buck. Lorenzo and I ran around the knoll or the mountain. Bo met us in the saddle. He filmed it with a phone scope from up above. And all we had left is Lorenzo was filming with this little GoPro. That's it, folks. We, what a beautiful deer, thank you. I'm a happy boy. Grateful, thankful. Can't believe that this really happened. So lucky. You probably were wondering what I was doing. I think I did five breathing cycles before I pulled the trigger. Yeah, I was like, he's getting ready. Hey, but I got the kill shot, Randy. That's what we were hoping for. So it totally happened. What a beautiful, majestic beast, huh? I just can't get over it. This is so cool, you guys. It's so cool. What's going on, guys? 
seriously. <laughs> Woo, look at that thing. Holy cow. Nice. <laughs> Congrats. That is so cool. Holy cow. That's a giant. How did you make it down here without following the trail? I don't know. I just dropped below that cliff and then side hilled. <laughs> Dang. That is crazy. Look at, look at this, Marcus. It's so heavy. Yeah, all the way out to his tip, too. You just take one quarter and then somebody has the cape and head. Or if Marcus does two quarters, then you just have cape and head. Yeah, yeah let's I do got that. my rifle and other stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, so you just do cape and head. And, yeah, that works. I feel like a puss. That's a big head, though. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, Marcus? That is so cool. I'm stuck in here. You should have heard Bo up at the top, Marcus. Yeah. I'm like, screw the film and let's kill this thing. He's like, he yells at me, if it's not on video, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, plenty big. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome. Really appreciate it, Bo Beatty. You, you are the you. rock star, man. Folks, I can tell you beyond any doubt that without both of these guys, this buck would still be trotting along somewhere. It was pretty wild. It, it's like, you couldn't make it up, could you? No. no, that was wild. Who's the idea whether to shoot this big thing down here? We knew we'd lost my trekking pole somewhere within about 20 yards of this edge of trees. And uh, we walked right, stumbled right on it. <laughs> Woo hoo. Yeah, I got a scale. Scale. You know what's gonna feel good tonight? Food and a fire. You guys got the llamas? Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Let's go. You guys lead. You want me to lead? Yeah. My wife's not real strong, but here he is, the king of the backcountry. Yeah, right. Gonna be Bo Beatty. One. Where are you taking him? Uh, I'm just down here somewhere. I don't, I don't have a stake for him, so. What do we got? Well, Randy wants to try spaghetti, so that leaves. Um, we got chicken teriyaki, chili mac, and lasagna. The chili mac's made with turkey. It's really good. I'm. <laughs> As exhausted as I have been since Marcus and I packed out an elk in Colorado in 2016. Because now we've shot three bucks in four days. And all of them required a lot of hiking, hoofing, and climbing. And I'm just, I guess I'm getting to be a wuss. I'm gonna have to toughen up if I'm going elk on my ass. But I, I have three great bucks that are gonna go in the freezer. And I'm excited about that. Bono here. Get some water. Thirsty? Yeah, he's drinking a lot. Nice. Here you go, Bono. Drink 
drinking out of the wrong watering hole, but you're drinking a lot. <laughs> really nice to have these guys because you leave camp you put a spotters and all your heavy stuff that's usually in your pack put it on them and you're up to your glassing point so much faster and you bring food huh we bring our our stoves and our dehydrated meals we eat up on the mountain all because of you fellas Bo baby's kitchen i tell you folks you haven't lived in the backcountry until you get to come and eat with Bo Beatty and use your Gerber Complete tool. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you're kind of like a downstreamer. Nothing personal. Oh my goodness, Bo. Here. You leave any for anyone else? Oh boy. See you guys. This is the first class service here. Day eight in a backcountry camp. And Bro Baby can still pull together some sort of omelet looking thing with fresh vegetables and bacon. Dude, thank you. Holy cow. Oh, little scallions on there. Bang! So this is Big Hank over here, Marcus. <laughs> That's Big Hank right there. Yeah, I'm making I'm making Big Hank coffee. And Big <laughs> Hank is in the tent. It's pretty cool. <laughs> There you go. There you go. How often are you making Big Hank coffee and Big Hank sitting in the tent while you're doing it? I'll tell you what, that is Big Hank. How often does that happen? Well, I just finished caping this guy. And now I'm using my tendon tool on my DTS to get these two incisors out of here because I'm not carrying the whole lower jaw out and what are we thinking this guy is five years old that'd be my guess based on all of our combined experience of looking at lower jaws on deer but there's a laboratory in Manhattan Montana mats and labs go check them out I'm now since I've learned about them I've really gotten into aging all of my animals. So I'm cutting out these two lower incisors. I'm gonna bring those back to Montana, give them to Matson. They'll cut it, they'll make a, a cut across here and they'll count the, what do they call it, Marcus? Annuli? Uh, I'd have to Google that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, they can age it with these two incisors. So. It's unbelievable. That buck's got a whale tail. Yeah, whoever shoots a mule deer with a whale tail. It is really unique, isn't it? I don't understand how that, it's not fractured, it's not anything. It would be cool you too. if I had the seven by eight and this buck on like a little pedestal, on a single pedestal, and then it was able to rotate so you could look at both of them. Yeah. And the pronghorn I shot in Idaho because I shot him those other two bucks in two days. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Plan is get all this meat in the panniers, and get them on the llamas' backs in the morning when we're heading out. Do all this in the daylight so that tomorrow in the dark, if we're heading out in the dark, or at least on our way out, let's put it that way. We already got the panniers ready. We just walk by with the llamas and throw them on their back. <laughs> gives us more time to be on the trail tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see our good to go.
Oh, oh you are. So oh, two of our best coming in here. Awesome oh, yeah, I love you too, buddy. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> good boy, good boy. I love you so much. <laughs> Super big bucks, huh? And one of my memories, one of my someday ideas became today. And it will be one of those memories that will be there for tomorrow and tomorrow and the next tomorrow. Thank you, Lorenzo. And thank you, Bo Beatty. Thanks for being great friends. And thanks for being an inspiration, Bo. You inspire me more than you probably could ever imagine. And I'm sure many others feel the same way.